When Mary Downing Hawn writes a book, the magic begins. Whether it's a mean-mouthed boy hiding family secrets, or a girl who's terrified of a ghostly presence haunting her little stepsister, her characters tell their own believable stories. When asked what advice she would give to young people who want to become writers, she said, The first thing is read, read, and read some more. Most of what I know about writing comes from the books I've read. Mary Downing Hawn grew up in a small town of College Park, Maryland in the 1940s and 1950s. Many of her stories come from her own experiences and influences from her childhood. In elementary school, Hawn was known as the class artist. She loved to read and to draw, but hated writing reports. She loved to make up stories, though, and instead of telling them with words, she used pictures. A former children's librarian, Mary Downing Hawn, has been writing books for over 30 years and is a favorite among readers. She has sold over a million copies and is best known for her ghost stories and mysteries. Wait Till Helen Comes was Mary Downing Hawn's first ghost story. It was published in 1986, has been in print for over 20 years and is still selling steadily. In the story, 12-year-old Molly and her 10-year-old brother Michael have never liked their younger stepsister, Heather. Ever since their parents got married, she made Molly and Michael's life miserable. Soon, Heather adopts a lonely grave in the cemetery next to their new home. She spends all of her time there. If that's not bad enough, Heather starts talking to a ghost named Helen who died in a fire with her family over a hundred years ago. Now her ghost returns to lure children into the pond to drown. Molly and Michael have a lot to learn about their bratty little sister. Will they understand? Written in 1990, Doll in the Garden is a story about Ashley, who had been warned never to go to the garden, but as a ten-year-old, she followed the beautiful white cat through the small opening in the hedge. She stepped into an enchanted place, a place where she might find the answer. She was a little girl with the golden curls and the huge sad eyes, whose voice cries out in the dark at night. Why does the white cat cast no shadow in the moonlight? Who is the owner of the beautiful doll found buried in the garden? If Ashley discovers the truth, can she ever Go back. Time for Andrew, written in 1994, is a spooky time travel tale where 11 year old Andrew from Missouri switches places with a ghost and travels back to the year 1910. Will he be able to fight his way back through time to reclaim his place in the present? Or will the ghost steal his life and leave him trapped in the past forever? Diana and her little brother Georgie have been living in the woods behind the old Willis Place, a decaying Victorian mansion, for what already seems like forever. They aren't allowed to leave the property or show themselves to anyone. But when a new caretaker comes to live there with the young daughter Lissa, Diana is tempted to break the mysterious rules they live by and reveal herself so she can finally have a friend. Somehow Diana must get Lissa's help if she and Georgie ever hope to release themselves from the secret that has bound them to the old Willis place for so long. Just before summer begins, 13-year-old Allie finds an old photograph. She recognizes the two children. One is her mother, the other her Aunt Dulcie. But who is the third person, the one who's been torn out of the picture? Allie will have all summer to figure it out since she's spending the summer with her aunt and her cousin in the same house her mom and aunt used to visit when they were kids. In her search, Allie meets mean and spiteful Sissy, who is determined to ruin Allie's summer. But Sissy also has a deep and dark and dangerous secret. Could it have something to do with the old photo? Allie is dying to find out, and if she's not careful, that's exactly what might happen to her. Travis and his sister Corey can't resist a good trick, 
so when they learn that their grandmother's sleepy Vermont Inn has a history of ghost sightings, they decide to do a little haunting of their own. But their prank soon turns terrifyingly real when they awaken Ada Jags and all the lovely bad ones. The shadows of children who tormented and mistreated in the past are also aroused. Events soon spiral out of control, frightening the staff and, and all the guests at the inn. And Travis and Corey must discover a way to get rid of Ada and release the children to their final death. Twelve-year-old orphan Florence looks forward to her new life with her great-uncle and great-aunt at Crutchfield Hall, an old manor house in the English countryside. But she doesn't expect the ghost of her cousin Sophia, who haunts the cavernous rooms and dimly lit hallways of Crutchfield, and concocts a plan to use Florence to help her achieve her murderous goals. Will Florence be able to convince others in the household of the imminent danger and stop Sophia before it's too late? Don't be lured in by the ghost of Crutchfield Hall. Ghost story lovers have a spooky treat in store. Try one today, if you're not too frightened.